Welcome to the lesson on signal sampling and aliasing. In the last lesson, we saw examples of tools to analyze the frequency content of signals. In every case, we were limited in the highest frequencies we were able to analyze. Specifically, if the sampling frequency of the signal was fs, the maximum frequency we were able to represent in our analysis was fs divided by 2. The sampling theorem states that for a continuous signal y of t that is band limited to contain no frequency greater than f max, y of t can be reconstructed without corruption from samples as long as the sampling rate is greater than 2 times f max, which is called the Nyquist sampling rate. In this lesson, we will use MATLAB to demonstrate why this Nyquist sampling rate exists. More formal mathematical derivations are required to prove the sampling theorem. That is out of our scope, but we can demonstrate core concepts in MATLAB that make it easy to understand the theorem. We will also demonstrate what happens when FS falls below the Nyquist sampling rate, which results in a type of signal artifact called aliasing. Let's get started. We start with a signal, a sum of two cosines, one with frequency 2 Hz and another with frequency 5 Hz. That gives us cosine of 4 pi t plus cosine of 10 pi t. And then we sample it. With a sampling frequency of 14 Hz, we sample the signal at these locations indicated by the black circles. From the samples, we can use the Fourier transform to compute the magnitude spectrum which shows that our sampled signal contains a 2 Hz and 5 Hz component. We can also reconstruct the original signal as a sum of cosines with amplitude and phase determined by the Fourier transform spectral components. We can see that just using our samples with our sampling rate of 14 Hz, we are able to reconstruct the original signal that we have sampled. Our reconstruction falls exactly on our original signal. Now let's see what happens when we change our sampling frequency to 12 Hz. At 12 Hz, we have fewer samples of our signal, but we can still obtain an accurate magnitude spectrum showing 2 and 5 Hz components, which can be used to reconstruct our signal exactly. Next, we will drop to 10 Hz sampling frequency. This is where we expect things to start getting weird. This is because we know the maximum frequency that our Fourier transform can represent is fs over 2. When fs is 10 Hz, fs over 2 is 5 Hz, and we have a 5 Hz cosine in our signal. Also, the sampling theorem says that we need to sample faster than 2 times the maximum frequency of the signal if we want to be able to reconstruct it. So, what happens? We can see that when we drop the sampling frequency to 10 Hz, our magnitude spectrum still shows us that we have a 2 and 5 Hz component, but our signal reconstructed using our Fourier components is wrong. Why? This is because the Fourier component for the 5 Hz frequency cannot detect the correct phase angle for the 5 Hz component based on these samples. In case you haven't noticed yet, observe that the red reconstruction while it does not agree with the original signal, it does pass perfectly through the same samples. So this same sparse set of samples could correspond to either the blue or the red signal. It turns out that when the sampling rate is equal to twice the maximum frequency of the signal, there are many possible signals that could give rise to those samples. Next, let's go even further, down to a sampling frequency of 8 Hz. Now things get even worse. Now the maximum frequency we have in our Fourier transform is 4 Hz, even though the signal contains a 5 Hz component. So the magnitude spectrum for our sampled signal now no longer matches the frequency spectrum for our original signal. We still have a component at 2 Hz, but now instead of 5 Hz, we have a component at 3 Hz and our reconstructed signal using these Fourier spectrum components looks like this red curve, which is the sum of a 2 Hz and a 3 Hz cosine wave with amplitude and phase determined by our Fourier components. Observe that, again, 
while the reconstruction clearly disagrees with the original signal, it still passes perfectly through the sampled signals. This is aliasing. The term alias is used to describe multiple names a person can go by. Here we have multiple signals that produce identical samples when the sampling rate is not high enough. As we use a lower and lower sampling frequency, we can see the problem gets worse and worse. One might expect that if our sampling rate was too low, we simply would not be able to detect higher frequencies. But the problem is actually much worse than that. Energy in the signal from frequencies larger than half the sampling rate is distributed to lower frequencies, creating so-called aliasing artifacts. Here we can see that energy from the 5 Hz component is now shifted to a 1 Hz component. When we go to 4 Hz sampling frequency, now we have aliasing for both the 2 Hz and 5 Hz components. At 2 Hz, we have two samples which can be approximated with a 0 Hz and 1 Hz component. This example with drastic undersampling provides a nice opportunity to make common sense out of the need for fast enough sampling. If our wave is changing this quickly, with 10 peaks and valleys in a second, would anyone really think that if we only have two samples it would be possible to reconstruct it? No, it's just not enough information. We could come up with an infinite number of reconstructions of high frequency signals that would fit the samples. However, on the other hand, if we can guarantee that our sampling rate is greater than two times the maximum frequency of the signal, our sampling theorem tells, tells us that we will not have aliasing. There exists only one solution for a signal with frequency less than half the sampling rate that explains the samples. Now let's go to MATLAB to look at a couple of examples of aliasing. In our first example, we looked at a constant signal and varied the sampling frequency. Now let's do the reverse. Let's look at a single constant set of samples and see how many different signals we can fit to it. We will define our samples as a signal containing two frequencies. F1 is equal to 2 Hz, and F2 is equal to 5 Hz. We will define our sampling frequency as 12 Hz, which gives us a sampling interval, Ts, of 1 over 12 seconds. Our sampled time vector in T is 0 in steps of Ts to 1 second. And our sampled signal Xn is cosine of 2 pi F1 in t plus cosine of 2 pi f2 in t. In the figure window, we can plot these samples using the stem plot function. The stem plot function displays the samples as circles with vertical lines to the x-axis, and we plot these circles with thick black lines. Next, using a for loop, we will display very finely sampled cosines of different frequencies that all pass through the same samples. So we define a fine sampled time vector t to range from 0 in steps of 0.001 to time 1. We define F3 as the set of different frequencies that we will display, which is 5, 7, 17, 19, 29, 31, 41, 43, 53, 55, and 65. We loop over this set of options within each iteration. We redraw our stem plot 
we can fix the axes to range from 0 to 1 in the x direction and minus 2 to 2 in the y direction. We define xA as our aliased signal of cosine 2 pi f1t plus cosine of 2 pi times the ith entry in f3 times t. We can add a title, which will include the frequencies of the cosines. that are being displayed. And we plot the signal then we will pause for the user to hit enter to continue to the next iteration. Here we can see that with 2 and 5 hertz cosines, these indeed pass through our samples, which is not surprising, as this is the same signal that we sampled to create the samples in Xn. Next, we have cosines of 2 and 7 hertz. This also passes exactly through our samples, but because our sampling rate of 12 hertz is no longer more than double the fastest frequency in the signal, if we use a 12 hertz sampling rate, this signal is aliased to the 2 and 5 hertz signal. Two and 17 hertz also passes through the same samples, as does two and 19, two and 29, two and 31, two and 41, 43, 53, 55, 65. I think it's easy to see that as frequency goes to infinity, there are an infinite number of signals that we can find that pass perfectly through these samples. But there is only one signal that gives rise to these samples that has a highest frequency less than fs over 2, or 6 hertz. Thus, when sampling a signal, it is important to ensure that our sampling rate is greater than double the highest frequency in the signal, or aliasing will occur. We can also listen to examples of aliasing corrupting audio signals. Let's load in our guitar sample. We'll just use the first channel of this two channel signal. Let's aggressively downsample it with a downsampling factor of 14. That is, we'll keep only every 14th sample of the signal and throw away the rest. Our new sampling frequency, NFS, will be FS divided by the sampling rate. which is 3150 hertz. Our Y down sample with aliasing will be samples in Y from 1 in a step size of samp rate to the end. Let's listen to the original signal. Pay attention to how the high pitch single string strums sound towards the end. Now 
let's listen to the same thing with the aliased version. The first thing you notice is that high frequency sounds are removed. With a sampling frequency of 3150 hertz, we can only hear up to about 1500 hertz sounds. But you also can note that the pitch of the string plucks changes substantially. This is aliasing from sounds that exist in the original signal above that 1500 hertz rate that are mapped to new frequencies below 1500 hertz due to undersampling. Can we do anything about it? Sure. If we need to downsample our signal by this much, we simply should first low pass filter this signal prior to downsampling to ensure that it contains no frequencies greater than half the sampling frequency. We use our myFFT function. We filter our signal by filtering the Fourier spectral components to zero out the components corresponding to frequencies greater than or equal to NFS divided by 2. Then the inverse Fourier transform in my IFFT lets us convert back to a time domain result. Now our Y down sample, no aliasing, can be sampled from Y low pass identically to a before. Let's listen to the alias signal again first. Now the low pass filter filtered no aliasing version. By low pass filtering out the high frequency components of the signal before downsampling, we remove the higher frequency content that would otherwise be aliased down into the lower frequency part of the spectrum of the signal. So we no longer hear the odd bells in the low pass filtered version. To summarize, aliasing is one of the most common digital signal corruption issues, which can be mitigated by sampling si signals faster than the Nyquist rate. But we have the tools needed to avoid aliasing when resampling using low pass filtering methods in MATLAB. This concludes Lesson 3 on Signal Analysis. If you have followed along, congratulations! You now have experience with powerful signal analysis and processing tools in MATLAB. If you are interested in more in-depth and theoretical fundamentals of signal analysis, I recommend the textbook shown on this slide.